chances are that you know about implant retained over dentures. However, are you aware that there is a much more affordable and less complicated overdenture system for your patients? It's the Root Retained Flexi Post Overdenture System. This presentation will guide you through the indirect, coping technique. Please see the direct, chair side technique to use the Flexi Overdenture System without a coping. The simple technique starts with post selection. Post sizing begins by making sure there is at least 1 mm of tooth structure lateral to the most apical placement of the post. The post hole preparation begins with the removal of the root filling material using either a piso or Gates Glidden Reamer. When 100% of the post hole length and 90% of the width have been achieved, the primary reamer is used. Since the flexi overdenture will fit optimally if a more concentric hole is maintained, the number of entries into the post hole with the primary reamer should be limited. The secondary drill is used to create the second tier preparation. The smooth extension on the drill is simply a lead to facilitate parallelism between the primary post hole and the second tier. We will now try in the post. If this was a solid shank threaded post, insertion would cause a dangerous concentration of stresses. However, because of the split shank, as soon as the threads touch the walls of the canal, the two legs of the post collapse upon themselves. Rather than embedding themselves, one millimeter into the canal walls, they embed themselves only about 0.01 m. That represents very little embedment and, consequently, very little insertional stress. The second most apical thread now follows in the wake of the most apical thread. Because the second thread is further up the shank, it has less ability to collapse. As a result, its thread embeds itself 0.03 m. However, the increased amount of embedment is only 0.02 m. Again, very little additional embedment and, consequently, very little additional insertional stresses. The third most apical thread follows in the wake of the previous two threads. Because the third thread is further up the shank it has even less ability to collapse. As a result, its thread embeds itself 0.05 m. However, the increased amount of embedment is only 0.02 m. Again, very little additional embedment and, consequently, very little additional insertional stresses. When doing the indirect slash coping technique, a half a millimeter of space is needed between the flange of the post and the coronal tooth structure for the coping to be placed. To achieve the half a millimeter of space, seat the post completely and then back off half turn. Since the threads on the shank are one millimeter apart, half turn backward will produce half a millimeter of opening. If the post is longer than the post hole, remove enough apical post length to allow the post to seat completely, and again back off half turn to achieve the half a millimeter of space needed. After achieving proper post seating, take an impression of the trial seated post. It is important to note that the post is not cemented in place at this point. Remove the impression from the post. Remove the post from the canal, and temporarily seal the canal. Send the impression to the laboratory along with the brass transfer stud, which you may or may not have inserted into the impression. The laboratory places the transfer stud in the impression and pours it up in stone or plaster. The laboratory then waxes up and casts the coping. When the lab returns the coping, cement the coping. After the coping is cemented, and while the cement is still wet, the flexi overdenture is cemented to place. The insertion stops when the flange is fully seated within the coping. Now let's review the procedure for incorporating the denture attachment. Make sure the rubber band is covering the height of contour of the head. If not, there is a risk that the cold cured acrylic could lock in under the head, making removal of the denture difficult. Place the nylon attachment cap on the post and mark the cap with marking paste. Place the denture over the ridge and remove it. 
The mark indicated the spot in which to relieve acrylic in the denture. Repeat this procedure until the denture fits passively over the cap. Now place cold cure acrylic into the relieved portion of the denture and place over the ridge, and let set. Use a natural pink self-curing acrylic in case there is any perforation of the denture. Remove the denture when set. Remove the rubber band on the post and discard it. It is no longer needed. Here you can see the final nylon cap incorporated into the denture. Note, the same technique can be used to incorporate the optional easy change metal housing and screw and nylon cap insert. When using the optional easy change attachment caps, upon wear, the dentist can quickly unscrew and replace the nylon inserts in seconds.